Hi, my name is Dave Pantelli. Um, I'm a customer over at your fry store here at Waddell and Litchfield. Um, you have to forgive me. I got a, a slight speech impediment because of my I'm getting in, I'm getting in, uh, implants in about a month, and so my teeth are messed up. They're missing. So um, bear with me on this. I'll try and talk as clearly as I can. Um, this is important. I hope whoever's watching this pay attention here because what happened up at your fry store the other night has been going on with other people for about a year. My brother went into that store a year ago and had the same thing happen to him that happened to me the other night. Um, and it's, it's systemic. It's a pattern. Um, this has been obvious to me over the past year. There is a culture of abuse that exists up at that store at closing time that is legend. People talk about it. I mean, you can go over to the Safeway next door and people that won't go to that fries anymore because they've been treated like that, they talk, they talk to each other in line over there. You can hear it sometimes over there. That Your fry store is literally making non-customers out of customers on a daily basis. You know, it's, it's sad. I've been going to that store for 18 years. 18 years I've been going to that store. I've been there. I counted my receipts from because uh, I keep track of them every year. I've been there 9,000 times since 2005. I've spent $50,000 at that store um, in the time I've been there. I've never had a problem in 18 years up there. I've never had an, in, in, I never had a, 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 an altercation, never had a disturbance, never had an incident up there. But I went in there the other night, and now they're labeling me as a problem person. They lied about me. They, they, they get together, and they all agree with each other, and they lie to the police. They lie to the bosses, deceive their bosses. I'm sure they do. They painted me out to be some kind of problem person, and they were they treated me the, the way that I was treated the other night was outrageous. Um, I'll go back to the beginning. Okay, I walked in that store. I walked up to the door. Well, first of all, let me go back a little bit more. I have to go up there close to close, at least twice a week, because of my work schedule, and, uh, and so I'm there quarter to eleven, ten to eleven, sometimes five to eleven. I go in and grab, but I got to go and leave. Right? I'm always, I'm never lingering beyond close beyond close. I, I, I know the time. I know you got to be out by 11. I always am. Um, but when I walk in there sometimes, if, if you can see how I, I'm approached, I'm never greeted at that late. Most of the time you walk in there that late, do you, people will say things like, do you know what time it is? You know, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're closing in five minutes, you know, stuff like that. The other night I walked in there at seven minutes to 11. I walked up to the door. It didn't open like it all the automatic door. I thought it was just stuck, so I did what I normally do at other places. I grabbed the doors and opened them, you know, and walked in. Um, didn't think anything of it. I wasn't trying to be defiant. I didn't know that there was somebody on the other side of that door who was going to say to me, we're closed, you have to leave. That's what I was told when I walked in there the other night. We're closed, you have to leave. And, uh, and I said, well, I'm just going to grab a bottle of cranberry juice. I was already in there, and I kept walking. And, and what I was told was, sir, you have to get out. That's what I was told. You know, and I turned around and I said, are you you talking to me this way? Are you serious? Why are you doing this? You know, it's seven minutes to 11. She said, no, it's five to 11. I said, well, whatever. I'll be out by 11. So I, I just ignored it and kept going. When I got back up to the to the uh, register uh, to check out five minutes later, uh, three minutes later, whatever. I went and grabbed a couple of uh, breakfast steaks too. Um, I was greeted by an entourage of ladies three different ladies, a lady named Audra, a lady named Lisa, who was the one at the door, and another one wearing yellow. I don't remember what her name was. I don't. I, I couldn't get it. They were telling me by asking for names, I was harassing their people. So so anyway, um, I got a video of this, by the way. I can send with this video here. Um, and you can see how Audra was treating me. It was just awful. I mean, she's bitter and angry and get out and all this, you know, and I'm still a customer. Whether she likes me or not is not, or not relevant, you know. So anyway, the cops come up there, and I called the cops when I got home because I was aware she called the police. So I called the police and said, look, I want to find out what they said and add my, the real, the truth here, you know. And so they told me, this girl, Audra, and I realized this is a pattern because they did the same thing to my brother a year ago. Um, this girl told the police that I was mean-spirited, hateful, harassing people. Uh, that I had been banned from the store earlier that day, which is just a complete made-up lie, to I guess to give her 
position more oomph, you know, more more juice, you know. She had to make that up, throw that in there. I, I hadn't been band there earlier. If I was, I'd have been doing this then, you know. But uh, anyway, um, so I talked to the police, and I was just like, wow, they just made this stuff up. What they do is they, they a customer comes in, like me, who says, hey, man, you're the customer service is lousy or something. We're not, I wasn't nasty or mean or using vulgarities or profanity. You know? I just said, hey, man, your customer service is awful here, you know. And uh, for that, they get all these people together. The cops come up, and they all say the same thing. They get their story straight with each other. And they paint the person out like me to be this real bad customer, and then, then I'm trespassed off the property. They just, they just use hostility and vengeance to get rid of people they don't like. So they're taking a good customer. I'm a good customer, man. I've been there for decades, and all of a sudden, I'm all of a sudden turned into this real bad guy. Never, you know, I, I would tend to think like the police said, if I'm a bad guy, I think that would have shown up years ago. You know, how am I there 18 years and all of a sudden I'm this bad guy, you know? So, um, and you can look under my VIP membership. I, I'm not lying. I, I've, I've been a good customer up there. We used to do all our dinners and employee functions. We used to cater for you guys. You know, I, I spent a lot of money up there. I still do. So what they did to my brother a year ago was even worse. He, came, he went in there five minutes till closing on uh, Christmas Eve. They were getting ready to close for the holiday, right? So a bunch of people were out front trying to get in and, and uh, some girl, Allison, was at the door talking to people. I mean, somehow the door got pushed open and a, about a dozen people kind of pushed their way through and went in the store. I, I don't know all the details about all that, but, you know, I mean, it is what it is, you know? And, uh, but they, the, my brother was one of those people and they, they painted him out the same way. They told the police all kinds of nasty stuff. My brother's older than me. He's harmless, you know. He's not, he doesn't have a, a, an aggressive bone in his body, you know. Um, but they were pushing him with their chest. They, they followed him around the store. He was upset. He called me. He, they, he said, Dave, they followed me around the store, and they were pushing me with their, bumping me with their chest. And I, I understand that because, like I said, this culture of abuse has been up there for about a year. And I have witnessed it when I go there close to close a dozen times in the past year. At least a dozen times they have treated me that way. I've been followed through the store, told to get out, called a loser, uh, all this kind of stuff. And the funny thing about it is I've brought this to the attention of the management there, Clint, uh, Allison, all kinds of people. I've told about it and it doesn't stop. It gets worse. Now in the past month, they've gone from closing, t telling people to get out by 11. Now they're standing at the door at seven minutes till the other night telling people to get out. Now, people go up there to shop at 5 to 11 to grab a gallon of milk or um, some ibuprofen or whatever. It might not be the ideal situation. I get people work a long day, they want to go home. I get that. But that doesn't give you carte blanche to treat people however you want. You know, what they did to me the other night cannot continue to happen. They, they not only, they, they, you, people walk in there and instantly there's a, there's a culture of hostility there. Not the people aren't making that up. The, the people who work there are instantly hostile with people that, that come up there. And when people are surprised and maybe bite back a little bit, they get lied about and kicked out of the store. The police are told they're problem people, you know? So, you know, I'm not going to keep dwelling on this, but i got to ask you people down there, what are you going to do about this? You can't let me stay banned up there. I didn't do anything wrong. I've been going there for 20 years. You know, and I'm not pleased with what's going on. And I've talked to the management up there and it keeps happening anyway. I tend to believe, I don't know about Clint, you know, uh, one of the other managers, Mike over at, at uh, Reams and Bell, he had some pretty interesting things. He's heard about this too. He gets some of the customers over there that come in there. And then, then the other night, I forgot to mention this, when I left the other night, and one of the customers came out there and he said, man, you should hear what they're saying in there about you. I said, what are they saying? He said that, that Audra, the girl who, who was confronting me, you'll see her in the video I'm going to send. She said to one of the guys there, and the guys, i got to tell you something, the men that worked there, they called up there for security reasons. They were, the way they were looking at me, they were like, man, dude, I'm sorry. They, they, were not, they were not pleased with this. 
They didn't say anything to me. They just stood there with really sorrowful eyes is what they had. But one of, one of the customers came out and said, Audra told one of the guys that worked there to take off his name tag and go out there and tune me up, is what the guys told me, and put him out of his misery. Now, she probably was joking. She's probably being hyperbolic, whatever. You know, I don't think she was really trying to get me killed. But that kind of that kind of attitude is what's up there, you know. And and, and the guy gave me his name and number. I, if this goes to court, if I don't if I don't get restored there, there's going to be problems. I'm not going to let this continue. You guys have to do what you have to do. You have to be leaders here. You have to exercise some leadership and fix this. This has been happening for way too long. I bet you guys have lost hundreds of customers because of this. It happens every night with people up there. Maybe not this severe, but people are barked at when they come in there and made to feel really demeaned and, and, and really, really, um, they're accosted verbally, you know? So uh, you guys have to do something about this. I, I shouldn't walk in there in a month or a week or a month and see these same people working there. That should not happen. These are bad people. These people are working against you. They're lying to the police. They're lying to you people. They're lying to the superiors. Or, or if they're not lying, then the superiors are in on it. And that, you know what? You know, a lot of times in leadership, I've been in leadership all my life. A lot of times you see this kind of stuff happening in the ranks, it's because the leaders condone it. The lifeblood of leadership flows to its people. So I'm wondering how this has been able to even go on that long at this store. But it's not cool. We're not talking about a minor problem here. We're talking about a major incident, man. You know, something bad's going to happen up there. They're going to do this to the wrong person, and that's going to be in the news up there. They are mean, man. They treat people really bad. You know? So if you guys don't do something about it, I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to get exposure on that. I've already... I'm not trying to sound like a crusader here. I've got a video of about 20 incidents from the past year that are that is damning video to prize. Okay? And I, I tell you what, I've talked to Channel 3 on your side, investigative reporters. Yesterday or Saturday afternoon I talked to them. And they're they're willing to cover this. They're willing to put fries in the in the spotlight. You know, if I show them these videos, man, this is not good. And so I'm telling you, you guys need to do something. You know, I've got a list of probably 15 people that want to go class action with this. People are people have been hurt up there. What they did to me the other night is illegal. It's, it can't be legal. They can't do this to people. You know, and then the cop says they wouldn't even show the cop video. They said, "Well, can you trespass this guy?" He said, "The, the, the girl I talked to said, you know, they're not bound to show us video, but they refuse to show us any kind of video." You know, they said, "Well, if we only show video when." Uh, when, uh, when we're going to press charges, we'll show you video. But we're not going to press charges against them. If they had the video, they would press charges. If they had video, they'd show everybody. There's no video of me getting banned earlier in the day or anything like that. So they're lying, man, and the cop knows it. The cop said two things to me. If this is who you were, uh, this, was, this would have reared its ugly head years ago. You, you wouldn't have lasted 20 years up there. So they're probably lying. We understand that, but we still have to trespass you because they asked us to. And when they wouldn't show the cop video, they, that was it for the cops. They said, you know what, these people, they're bullshitters. You know. So um, I'm waiting to hear from somebody from corporate today. I'm going to accompany this with other video okay, that I took up there. Now, my VIP membership used to be 623-215-6895. It was that number from 2005 until last year. When a guy that used to work there named Nick messed around with my account trying to fix something and accidentally deleted it. I don't know if all my years of history even shows on that number now. It should. I hope it does. The new number they gave me now over the past year is 602-575-6636. But I can't even enter it in when I go to the store. i got to use my phone to scan the code to use my VIP card. That's been screwed up, too. Uh, but at least I can still use the card. But, um, the, again, it used to be 623-215-6895. Now it's 602-575-6636. I'm sorry I had to waste your time with this, but I'm, 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 I'm a man that's been injured. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to be melodramatic, but I've been 
you know, psychologically or emotionally, whatever, injured. I've been treated really, really bad by a company. You know, I've been going to Kroger's. I'm from Detroit originally. I've been going to Kroger's all my life. I can't believe that there's people working up there like this. You know, this is bad news, and they've perfected it. It's an art. This is this is this is a pattern there. They they did this pretty good, man. You know, and uh, to the person that maybe lacks a little discernment, you know, I, I'm probably a really evil guy. You know, just because things were said, not that weren't even true. You know, so um, get a hold of me. I, my contact information is there, and uh, in my email. I'm going to send this via email. I want someone to talk to me. I want something to do something about this. You know, I want to know what's being done. I want to know that justice is happening here. You can't let this continue to happen. And when you look at the video I'm going to send you of Audra, it's not real damning, but it does show her attitude. It shows her, her, her disdain for me for no reason. I'm asking her in the video, why are you doing this to me? Because I came in late? You know, get out, get out. She's bitter and bound up, angry, mad, you know, ruthless, you know. Followed me out of the store, cussing. Not really cuss. She didn't cuss. She was yelling at me. But anyway, all right, said enough. You guys have a good day. Whoever sees this, I hope you do something. You got to do something. It's not right what's going on, all right? See you later.